my name is Mary Williams, and I'm a sculptor. I work in stone and clay. And my education was, I went to the University of Kansas for two years and then transferred up to the uh, Art Institute in Chicago. And I worked there, I mean, I studied there for two more years. I, because of my age and my father who said that I could not be an artist, I had to be practical. So I studied interior design and uh, I loved it. It was very interesting but I took a sculpture class and I was, I was enthralled. I had to go and do that, that's my calling. But you have to make a living too. So I was an interior decorator for about three to four years. And then I met my husband and he was in the Air Force. So we traveled a lot and every place we traveled, I took classes and, uh, did all my artwork. And then when he retired, we moved up to Minnesota into our lake home and it was my turn. And I really got into my stone and uh, all my artwork. I work in alabaster and this is one of my pieces here. It's a swan. And I also work in clay. I'm working in uh, paper clay and have taken many classes and enjoy it very much. Um, I that that's kind of my history. That's where I'm at. I've gotten grants. I've been in many many shows, and I just here I sit in my little studio and work most every day. <laughs> so that's my history. talk about your sculptures. Yes, I do mostly women. I, I love figurative work. I, I will take you outside of my studio right now and show you some of my other okay. things I have done. This is one of my pieces. This is my, I, I don't do very many bronze, but that's a, a bronze lady I did, or maybe a five, five, ten years ago. Okay. Oh, this is some of my clay work that I'm doing. This is another stone, stone pieces. And here's some more. And this is a stone piece I'm going to work on. <laughs> so, and in the corner up there is a, a limestone piece. She's called the lady. So this is our yard and we have many, many pieces around. I also did a, uh, I got a grant to work in cement and these are called the garden ladies. They're all reading and uh, I've had a lot of fun working in cement, except now it's, it's, I've gotten so burnt by it that I don't <laughs> work in it so much anymore. But these are the ladies and they're all, they're a, a little girl, a teenager, a middle-aged woman and a grandma. And they're all in the garden reading. I do a lot of that up there is yoga. And that's our lake. <laughs> I'm going over to my little house where I keep most of my sculptures. This is this is called a torso. And she's made also made out of limestone. And that's just a lady thinking, so she got very abstract. Okay. This is my student. This is where I keep most of my artwork. It's a, a variety, as you see, clay. And then over here is stone. Oh, this is kind of what, well, this is all the things I do. <laughs> There's, oh, okay. So now I don't know other than that what kind of questions you want to ask or? You are working with limestone, alabaster, uh, cement. So what's it like to work with them? Can you differentiate a little bit? The lime, limestone is probably the e easiest. I'm going to go back over to my studio now. Um, limestone is probably the easiest because it's the softest and it has no grain. So therefore, uh, carving on limestone is fun because you can do what you want to do and 
then I, I love alabaster because it's not as hard as marble and I can, it has beautiful stone, uh, beautiful uh, grain. Uh, so I can kind of play with the grain and uh, watch what happens when on this car. I'm all paper clay now because it is so, you don't have to, uh, let's see how, how you can put this. You don't have, you can glaze it before you fire. So there. So I play play around with paper clay a lot. I'm doing uh, spiky things and I'm doing lots of texture. That is a piece of uh, um, hardware wire dipped in paper clay and stones on it. It's, I've been playing with that. Uh, there's another piece like that. So, and I'm making funny little bowls. Uh, this is a piece of clay I'm working on right now. I make a lot of these. These seem to, people seem to identify with this, this, these little ladies I do all the time. So this is, this is, uh, I make a lot of bowls. I work on t textures. Textures I'm working on now because I've had a lot of fun with the experience of doing that. Okay. So that's kind of my, my world. Uh, that's, that's my world. That's what I do. <laughs> the, what you do is uh, very physical. So, yes, I, I, I'm a very tactile, a very physical person. I like to keep busy. And so doing my artwork is everything to me. Um, I love pounding on stone. Gets rid of all your frustrations is what it does. <laughs> and uh, uh, this year has been very hard on the whole world because of COVID. And I think uh, doing my artwork has helped me through it. And so, and I've been trying to do peaceful pieces, pe pieces that kind of calm the soul a little bit rather than, you know, very dramatic pieces. So when I did my, my um, a swan, I wanted to, to make it very peaceful and calm and, uh, so of all my pieces this year have been that way. Your body, the body you're working with, how do you decide how to pose it? I let the clay, when I'm working in clay, I let the clay determine that. I usually start with a, you know, with this, usually a seated piece and I have, I just plunk it down and, and start moving up the body and it, it tells me what to do. It tells me how to move the, move the clay around, and the stone is the same way. I have an idea in the back of my head, but the stone tells me what to do. I, I just let it all happen. Uh, I was doing a piece uh, of, a, of a torso of a woman and all of a sudden I hit the stone wrong and it split right in two. And I thought, oh my gosh. And I let it be because it, it turned out to be one of the nicest stones I did. So I, I just let, let the clay and the stones tell me what to do. It's it's that easy. And I've taken lots of uh, classes I uh, uh, in at anatomy, so I kind of know how, how things work. So it's just it's just doing it. And I taught a lot of classes in in figure in like uh, figure figures like that one. Um, they you know I have a, a model and the the class comes to our point and they we do a figure in a day so it's always fun uh, we have a really great time and it's it's and it's a rewarding for them because most of these people have never played with clay or done anything and at the end of the day they have a figure and it's very rewarding for them patience Patience and not being critical. Uh, everybody's at a different stage. Everybody has thoughts and looks at things. So you have to be very patient. Don't be critical of their work. Just push them in the right direction. Um, especially the, the people that are just starting out. And, and no, and the older people too, the, the artists that have done this for a long time, they come and they think, oh, they're, they're just going to do this. And all of a sudden, 
they're they're way off and you kind of learn to to be patient and to be show them just kind of push it this way or push it that way and or put a hat on it or move the leg a little and all of a sudden they're going oh that's how it's done and so just just be nice be be pleasant and do do what you don't be pushy don't don't be hard i've had classes where people are teachers have been really hard and not nice it's, it's not fun to be in a class like that so i i i enjoy teaching it's hard work though <laughs> do you find that uh, over time your coaches changed oh i've just gotten better i've got i've learned so much um when i first started out i just i was in love with stone i was in love with it all and, and you let let your your medium detect what you do rather than trying to force it and, and say this is the way it should be i just kind of go along with what everything's doing that day and uh yeah i i just have learned so much over the years and now that i'm older and i am uh i it have i have patience for a stone i you can work on it for eight hours and then walk away and come back the next day and see what i have done and see how it can be, get better so and it clays the same way i it, i but i experiment more with clay um I'm i more, said that i'm more serious about my, my clay stone pieces that i you know, i am about my clay pieces clay is fun and stone is serious okay um my clay tools i use a lot of plaster tools uh crisp that uh, they have uh crisp lines they are uh my favorite tool yeah is in fact i had i had a but here i this is my favorite tool i had it made for me because i like the it's metal and it's it makes a crisp line and i like that that kind of uh well like like her she's wait a minute, can you see her like she's got crisp lines so i like to carve on it and so that's i use a lot of clay um a lot of plaster tools in my clay um also i my stone tools my stone um, tools are right here i have a compressor and here's all my stone tools i use a pneumatic um uh, a you new a pneumatic uh, uh, drill. So I have all these tools that I use in my, and uh, I I use a lot of files and a sandpaper. I, I use basically everything that a stone carver does. There are just, there's just not many women stone carvers anymore. Uh, I've only met maybe, maybe a, ha a dozen women that do stone carving. I used to take a limestone symposium every year, and there must have been 20 men to every woman. And, but we had a, it was a wonderful experience. And that's where I started in limestone. I use Indiana limestone because it's, it's probably the best. I don't travel too much and teach. I, uh, we, my husband and I, of course, he was in the Air Force, so we traveled then. But we've traveled all over the world, and uh, I have gotten creative. I, every place I go, we take tons of pictures and uh, meet all the artists I can. I met a wonderful artist in India who shared his tools with me, and we talked for a long time about his carving because their carving is so much different than ours and i uh also it was I mean, i've just we've traveled a lot and experienced a lot so yeah i think all those experiences and all those uh people that you meet along the line i have influenced my art a lot so. Uh, I was uh, 
commissioned by the historical society in our little a little town of Fergus Falls, Minnesota, to do an Indian for um, the the lake area. And I, as I came and approached them, I said, I only do women, I don't do men. And I gave them three marquettes. One was a woman sitting with a bowl of, um, of uh, vegetables or fruit in her lap. The other one was a tall uh, Indian with a papoose. And the other one was very modernistic with their hands upheld high. And uh, they chose the woman with the bowl of uh, vegetables or fruit in her lap. So uh, it was one spring I came up here and uh, start, it was still snowing. And I had this huge block of limestone and I carved her for about eight weeks. And she sits on the shore of a battle lake of Minnesota and a, the Indians came and uh, blessed her and dedicated her. It was a wonderful experience. So that is the only really big uh, public art piece I've done. I The, the women at uh, the women that I showed you that are reading the little group of uh, that I did in cement, they were going to use that in a library scene, but it uh, by the time the cost got in all the po political things, that was canceled. So I haven't done too much uh, art. I'm a very private person, so I kind of I don't push those. Uh, I when I see them happening, I don't go for them. I don't try to enter all those contests. There's just too much political stuff going on. It to me that you are a spiritual woman and quite an introvert. Very much so, yeah. I am an introvert and my husband's an extrovert, so that kind of makes us even. Uh, I am an introvert. I love being by myself and alone and and if, I, if people come and see my artwork, fine. I just love to have it around and uh, I sell a lot, but it's always surprising how much you sell, but I, I'm not pushing to sell my artwork. I'm only in one gallery now, and that's a small gallery in, in our little Battle Lake, Minnesota. And I'm um, gonna, uh, that's probably where I, you know, sell the most art I have been. I, I have sold people from you know, Minneapolis, they come up and they look at my, they come make an appointment and come and see my art. But I'm, yeah, I'm not, I don't try to push it too much. <laughs> I, I, I really, these are my babies. <laughs> I work hard on them. Yes, and spiritually, oh yes, I am very spiritual. I have a, I have a, um, oh, a guardian angel that helps me with my art. And I truly let her help me. Uh, Right now, the, the piece I'm going to do next on that raw piece is a mother and child. I love that theme. And uh, I have been collecting mother and child uh, pictures for years. And I hope mine turns out as, as good as some of those. It's, and it, it will be very stylistic because that's kind of the way I go. But I love, you know, I love to do the mother and child thing, which is very spiritual for me. Mm -hmm. You prefer to do women's body. They are more complex than uh, man's body. Although they're softer, they they are more gentle, and they have a lot of beautiful, beautiful angles. And uh, you can you can uh, push and shove their bodies. You can make them chunky and lovely. Ha have all this lovely flesh, or you can make them very thin. And you know, you don't have to have that ideal body. You. Um, Men's bodies are hard, and they you want muscle and all that, all the you know prototype of a male body. But a female body is is forgiving and uh, sensual and loving, and uh, I guess that's the only reason I like to do um, the female body because it has so much more uh, beauty to it than a male body does. Oh, I like to do animals. Um, uh, my husband was in 
uh, at one of the nicer ones I did, my husband was in uh, Greenland for a year. And he came back and said, well, I'd do a muskox for him. So I did this. It was, it was, it's not real big. It's probably about, oh, eight to 10 inches tall. But uh, it, the muskox was really fun. And I enjoyed doing that because it was for him. Uh, animals, I love birds. I think probably more than anything, um, birds are very fun and free. And, and uh, but uh, no, I do a lot of animal. I did lots of polar. We went to Alaska, came back and did polar bears for a long time. Uh, I did, and there's shapes. I mean, when we were in Australia, I saw all the, the seals on the islands and stuff. I came back and did those shapes for, for a long time. I did seals. And so I, yes, I love to do animals, but I could always come back to the female figure because it's still the best. <laughs> still more fun to do <laughs> working in texture. Yeah. So I'm having fun with texture right now, which is kind of interesting because this is all paper clay that I'm playing with right now and kind of just trying to decide what 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 the textures are all these textures are going to come together and do so that's kind of what I'm playing with right now yeah I, I there's another one with texture and I'm working on that so yeah so right now I've, that's kind of it and I'm trying to incorporate that in my uh women work because uh, like uh, like skirts and uh, you, know, you can dress them and then put this lovely texture on. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Saran oh, there's a place for it. I mean, I, I love, I love people who make bowls and, and uh, I think I, to me, I, I've taken ceramic so classes. It's just so repetitive. I, I'd rather do my funny bowls and that stand up crooked and I um, I I mean there I have a great uh, appreciation for ceramic art there's that is another art all form and all its own uh, no I I have no I just don't want to be a ceramic person I, I I don't like the repetitive of it I like to do stuff that's different every day mm-hmm Oh, I like Raku. Uh, I don't have the uh, facilities to do Raku, but I take Raku and I smoke fire it. And that gives it this basically the same uh, a kind of feel of Raku. I do bowls and that kind of thing. I've even done a couple of figures and, and raku it. it. Um, oh, I, 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 the colors that come from Raku are beautiful. So... Yeah, I have no problem with that at all. I, I think Raku is, is an art form all its own. And people have really done a lot of beautiful things with it. So I I, I like Raku. <laughs> but I'm, I smoke fire a lot of my work. Mm -hmm. Have you worked with uh, kilns before? Well, I have my own kiln. I have to have. I mean, I live out here in the country. And I don't have access to a kiln anyplace else except for you know the schools. And uh, so when I first, when we first moved up here full time, that was the first purchase I made was a kiln of my own. So I have a large kiln that I can fire all my work, my clay work in. So, yeah. Oh me! Oh, I I always use electric kiln. I have uh, I I tell you the truth. I don't know that much about the the, the fire kilns, uh, the wood fire kilns. I have not made a study of kilns. I I use my kiln to do what I have to do, and I I am learning how to glaze. And glazing is another whole uh, study. And I have, I'm just starting to learn how to glaze and how, how, how to mix glazes. And that, it's another whole world. And I kind of, I'm old enough now where I just want to stay where I'm at. I love my clay. I love my stone. And that's where I, I'm, the, I'm better at. Uh, one nice thing about uh, paper clay is you do not have to bisque fire it first. You can glaze right on the raw clay. 
and then fire it. So that whole step of this firing and then glazing and then firing it again is gone. So I, I, that's one of big reasons I use paper clay. Um, uh, also paper clay is also very, you can go very, very thin with it and it's very light because the paper burns out and makes the clay light. Um, I don't have a lot of, uh, glazes. My glazes are, uh, I just buy them from the clay company. I don't try to mix my own glazes. I, in fact, I was taught her the other day and I said to her, can you teach me a very basic clay and a uh, basic class in clay gate glazing? Because it's another, it's another whole way of thinking about things. And uh, I'm not sure I really want to get into it. I'm very happy with what I do. I'm very happy with just my smoke fire, which I do a lot of, and uh, just keeping the clay pure and simple. I, I like to do masks. Masks, or masks are fun. Um, one winter, we went to Florida and, and uh, stayed in a, uh, Airbnb and I couldn't do all my artwork so I took some paper clay with me and I did masks and then I did uh, a caustic on top of them because you don't you know sometimes you don't have to fire paper clay so I did an un caustic on top of the paper clay and that was fun I enjoyed that but again that's getting into painting and I am not a painter <laughs> I am a sculptor so the one behind you, uh, you can see, is a, an acoustic uh, mask. And I've done, oh, maybe, maybe 20 of, the, of different kinds of, of masks like that. Because I was by myself in a little apartment trying to figure out what I was doing with myself. So I, I, have, I have to keep my artwork up. And I love to do masks. Masks are fun. That yeah. you have experience working with wax as well. Uh, when you are learning how to do um, bronze work, you usually do your sculpture, your little marquettes or whatever you're doing in wax. Uh, I am not very fond of wax because I don't like the way it feels. It, it's a tact tactile. But um, so, yes, I've done some wax work. Uh, the encaustic you know, was fun because it's colorful. But uh, yeah, I don't do a lot of wax work. I, I don't like the feel of it. <clears throat> it's sticky. <laughs> Have you tried the other art forms? I've tried painting. I am, there's some of my painting back there. I am not very good at it. Um, I tried. Uh, block block printing i've tried yeah i well of course going to art school you try everything and you kind of find out what you're good and what you're not good at and uh i i have a um a little trouble with color so i kind of stayed away from painting because color is not my big forte so i i uh I like the basic just clay and stone and and let them let them do the colors for me. Have mm -hmm. you ever used yourself as a model, your body? <laughs> sure, of course. Um, I think it's fun when you teach a class. I taught a class uh, doing the heads, the bus uh, one year. And uh, it's funny, but all of the people that took the class, <clears throat> their heads all turned out looking like themselves. Because you look in the mirror every day and you see yourself. So you, you identify with that sculpture, with that way it looks. Yes, of course, I, I, I use my body and because lots of times there's no models around too. <laughs> but uh, you ha can't help but I've done masks. And those turn out to look just like me. So yes, you you tend to do yourself a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, probably, of course, uh, Henry Henry Moore. 
uh, at when I was growing up, he, as, as an artist, was one of the best sculptors, or, oh, he still is, one of the sp- best sculptors around. Um, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, they, his clean lines and loved, I lived in, when I lived into Chicago, I went to visit his homes there many times. Um, in the last few years, um, I took a class from Bruno Locasi. He's out, he's passed away, but his son is still doing, he influenced my work a lot. He was a in, in, very interesting, wonderful man. And I enjoyed his type and style of art. Um, uh, uh, other artists are concerned. I think you pick up things from every artist you get to know. Um, I have a wonderful friend who's an artist, a, a, a surreal artist in Chicago. Her name is Eleanor Ferris. And she does these wonderful surreal paintings. And uh, I think I've, uh, I've, I've gotten a lot out of her artwork. I have another friend who lives in Fargo, North Dakota, and she does fun, wonderful, funny, cute things. And yes, I've gotten uh, uh, inspired by her work. So I think everyone you meet, every artist you talk with, every artist that comes by your door, you, you grab something from them. And I know they grab things from me because sometimes they just come out and we talk for hours and, uh, they go away like, and next time you see them, their artwork has a little bit of your influence in it. So I think you get it from everybody. But, you know, big artists, people that you know, Henry Moore, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. Okay, um, there were Bruno Locasi, Frank Lloyd Wright, and Henry Moore. Oh, well, living here in Minnesota, I would say everybody that I know has gotten their shots already. So our little town is wide open. We, we can go any place. So I think probably get it, just getting out and talking to people and, and being with people and um, listening, listening to how people have handled this COVID. It's been really tough on the art community and uh, people. I'm an introvert, so... It's not so hard. I haven't, I've really kind of enjoyed it because I've had lots of time to do my artwork, but some people have really had a tough time through it. And they're having shows all over showing, you know, how did you handle the, the COVID? And I've been putting some of my artwork in those shows because all my artwork that I've been showing is very happy. I, I've done one that's a, a smiling, uh, smiling person and then I've got one that's just nothing but a big hug and um, so I how am I going to handle I'm, I'm just going to continue the way I always do I just just continue doing my artwork buy more stones and uh, and just be happy just be really happy <laughs> we got through it all I have one in our yard it's called the lovers and that's, I, I, I can try to show it to you if you want. Okay, I'll to. take you. Okay, I'll take you out. The limestone, and it's uh, as you can see that. So I worked a little bit of texture on it. This is how it looks. So that's that's the lovers. This was a piece of artwork I did. Oh, maybe a couple years ago. It's all paper clay. It's called the bird, the egg, and the nest. And it just, that's where it sits. And this is called yoga. This is one of my favorite pieces. 
I like yoga. So this is kind of our yard. We got other sculptures up there. This is kind of this is our little piece of the world here. So there's a couple more up here, but the and then of course the lady in the corner, you saw her before. Oh. And here, right there on the stand, and it's going to be a mother and child. Kind of figured out. And then down here, stones I had not gone. So that's going to be my challenge. And we were in Ireland, so I came back and made a Ireland. There's a trash can. I do my trash can firing. So... So this is kind of where we live and what's going on now. There's some fun things I do. I'm making bonsai trees. <laughs> of course, my lady, which I enjoy. Some uh, pieces of ladies that kind of fell apart, and so we stuck them in the corner. <laughs> so that's kind of where we're. That's our yard. I open up the area, our whole yard to anybody that wants to come out. And then we have a, you know, kind of like a cocktail party and have fun. And uh, so then they can see all my sculptures. So it's kind of fun. Um, thank you so much. Okay. I thank you again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.